boys and girls, it's Night Stalker here. Welcome along today to my guide on the Prefecture Archers. Uh, these guys are a pretty damn good unit in all consideration. Uh, their leadership is slightly higher than the Nemcan Archers, who you may be more familiar with. Uh, these guys have a much higher alpha damage, but they of course lack the bleed. All in all, the more I play with this unit, the more I like them best as my Archers of Choice for all tiers of play. And I'm hoping this little uh, guide will show you a little bit about why that might be. Let's go have a look at a bit of the uh, go and have a look at the bit of the engine room of these wonderful, wonderful archers. Rightio, let's have a quick look at the tech tree for prefecture archers. So here they are. Here, um, they're a, a typical silver era unit. Uh, they've come through the iron cap archer line, and uh, on the way to unlocking them, you'll get a small damage bonus to your arrow rain. Uh, the nodes that the Prefecture Archers use, each level increases Prefecture Archers' rate of fire by 4% of their base value. So they have a 20% rate of fire increase when you actually start completely upgrading them. They also are going to get a piercing damage um, increase of 6% in total. Um, and together, these make a very significant increase in the output of the Prefecture Archers. So if you are considering using this unit, it's really important to level these up fully. Um, over to the barracks. Here we go. So, the doctrines I have on mine are these ones here. So basically I've tried my best to increase the damage, um, the raw damage, base damage, by increasing the, the armor penetration and the piercing damage itself as much as I can, adding on a breakthrough doctrine, which is an additional 95 damage per shot, very worth having. And I've also increased the accuracy, which is quite important when you're using the arrow rain ability. Um, let's flick over to the vet line. So this is how I set mine up here. As you can see, I've taken a part of the top line and part of the bottom line. Now, the reason I've done this is because when I first started using this unit, I took them all the way along the bottom line here. And I found that they were just not putting out enough damage. Even though uh, you do get the fire in the arrow rain at the end, it doesn't proc very often. And as you're probably aware by now, once you start pushing into higher levels, a lot of things become uh, fireproof, uh, especially most of the cavalry and, and ha you know half of the heavy infantry at least, if not most. And uh, so that becomes less important. If you're playing this um, unit in lower tiers, you know, if you're under level 100, you're going to get along with the, the bottom line just fine. But what appears to, to be the intent here of the bottom line is to increase the the arrow rain and the the, the both the, the quantity of arrow range you can put out and the range and the amount of ammunition you can carry. And so that would, uh, in theory at least, increase your arrow range quite significantly. But what I'm finding is, taking them across, uh, across the top line here is just doing a lot more damage all around, right? Because you're getting these fire increases, you're getting all these armor penetration, damage versus infantry, you're going to get the extra range anyway, even more rate of fire, and some piercing damage. But I didn't take the last point in piercing damage or the additional 20% ammo, because they've actually got quite a lot of ammo already at 1,200. Um, I've instead increased the uh, arrow rain damage by 16%. Um, and that seems to be quite a key change that I've made that's made this unit really start to come into its own and do uh, more damage than I really thought it was possible for this unit to do. Um, I'm going to put up in the top left there a uh, inset. This is the my name can archers as they've been set up at to date and I'll allow you just to compare the stats between the two. The, the Namcans top line there which is the only way to take the Namcans. Um, you can see that well basically about the same stats all around, right? Everything is, is very, very similar. Um, the things that stand out as different, of course, is the amount of piercing damage, which is a good 600 difference, right? So that's like a, what, 45-ish, 40 to 50% increase in, in the piercing damage. And that is critical for why I now like to prefer the prefectures over the Namcans. The Namcans will do about the same amount of damage, but a lot of it becomes over time. Um, I do notice I probably get about the same number of hero kills when I use these two units. So I was quite surprised to, to, to see that the prefectures actually quite perform in this area as well. Uh, yeah, hey, let's move on to another segment and I'll show you more about this wonderful unit.
Okay, so let's take these guys for a bit of a spin. You've got two formations. You've got the loose formation, and you've got the, what do you actually call that? Wings. Wings formation. Now, both of them are about the same size and take up about the same space on the battlefield. So I'm not particularly worried about which one I use when I play this unit. It's just not something you have to give a lot of consideration to, unless you're just trying to stuff them into a corner or something like that. Um, as you can see, as far as archers go, there aren't many archers that would uh, annihilate a unit as it came into them like that, even in the tra training room here. Uh, so the basic attack is both rapid and damaging. Let's have a quick look now at the arrow rain ability. Well, the one thing about this ability that's really useful is that when you place the circle, they'll attack units that are around that circle, not necessarily only in that circle like you would with the, uh, the one key. Now in battle you'd have an infantry unit in front of your archers, well hopefully you would, and so I'm just, just going to emulate that by standing in front and allowing this unit to attack me. And as you can see, they do quite a nice big bit of damage there, especially with their arrow rain ability, which is basically uh, kind of like an ammo dump. They just fire absolutely like mad crazy and try and get as many arrows on target in a short space of time as possible. Uh, let's have a look now with their one ability. Their one ability is just like any other archers. They'll continually fire into that spot. No matter what happens to the uh, to the the enemy as they move around, they'll continue to fire into that spot, which is quite dissimilar, as you can see, from the arrow rain ability as we demonstrated already. Do you notice that even though they're in the um, the number one, for, uh, what do you call this? What what does the game call this one? Attack area formation. As soon as the enemy start to get close to the archers, they'll change their target to the enemy that's closing on them. And it's just one of the standard behaviours of the basic arch units in the game. Let's move over now to our next segment. Okay, so here we are now and a bit of a, a battle for you to, to view on how these guys are going to play out. So we're going to use the archer's strengths. We're not going to just line them up behind enemy infantry and shoot them straight forward like guns or crossbows. That is a fool's game. Archers have an incredible advantage over those two particular units by uh, using the ballistic curve of the arrows. As you can see, we can shoot them with complete impunity. There's no way they're coming all the way down the stairs, all the way down the siege tower and attacking my unit. So the unit was very, very safe. Even if they decided that's what they were going to do, my unit had a long, long time to run away. I'd spend half the time shooting them and half the time running, and they'd never be able to catch me. So the plan is now, how do we support our team? Archers are a support unit, so how do we do that? This entire right flank looks as though it's collapsed, so I'm sitting here very vulnerable and I don't want to move in. I can see we've got a couple of heroes up there, but if all of those infantry and things push down this way, there's no way I could hold them off. So I'm leaving them behind and I'm going to fight with my hero. I'm going to try and, you know, bait this unit into at least attacking me and continuing to fight within the, the arrow rain or the, the attack area. Uh, and continually just bombard them while we're fighting them and holding them up. Happily, our friendly spear has decided he's going to play that game too. So the goal for these condos is to push past the spear and me, and to get fully into the archer unit who will fall down like skittles, right? So our job is to block and prevent that, and kill this unit while we do that. We can sort of focus on this really, really tough short sword, and the archers will take care of the unit. So there we go. Handy, handy. So now we're just about out of ammo. Just having a think about how safe we are here. I'm going to go and check it out while my guys sit back. Looks safe, so we're going to run all the way up to the supply point. Let's go. Okay, we've now got all the ammunition we can carry, let's go and see what sort of chaos we can cause. I can see lots of light units down in that courtyard there, so I'm going to try and use the range and ballistic curve of the archers, the prefecture archers, to rain death and destruction and really unhappy people on the enemy, when we see these condos pushing up the stairs. Now we can see we've got a pike unit and a shield unit in the way, so we are at no risk whatsoever, and the condo player knows that, and it's pulled back quite satisfactorily for him. Now watch here, this is 
use the arrow rain and you're probably thinking why are those arrows going left right why are they going all over the place well they're actually trying to target units behind the wall even though the big stairs and everything are in the way and it's wasting a lot of arrows so if you use the attack area you'll notice that now they put all the arrows in the spot that I want them to Now the attack area is they'll attack things around that area. Uh, sorry, the arrow rain is they'll attack things around the area. The attack area command will only attack within the circle. Now you see how we've got a bit of a uh, ballistic curve problem here. So I'm trying to resolve that by moving them up to the, the edge of the parapet there, the crenellations. And we can at least get half the unit firing when we do that. From here, I'm like, how do I continue to support our unit on the ground there? Can we get some, some fire on these guys? you notice that I'm using the uh, attack area because my cooldown on my arrow rain is not ready yet. And as soon as that, uh, that cooldown is ready, we'll start to do a lot more accurate fire because my guys will start to track the enemy as they move around. And you'll see we start scoring a lot more hits. Rather than just firing blindly into a circle, they'll now start targeting. And as you can see, they were they were targeting units well beyond the, the maximum range of the unit because we put the, the circle of the arrow rain inside the, the range of the unit and they'll continue to fire at things around that, even though it would technically be out of their range. Okay, our chaps have rearmed. Let's bring them up here. We'll put them sort of around here somewhere, as close as we can sort of get them without using this big this big fire tower here thing will be in the way if we move them any closer. And I want to target those Namcans. And our team want me to target those Namcans too. Of course the number one thing that you should be targeting with your archers is other archers if you can do so. Because they die real nice and quick and you get them off the tail of your team. You know, general rule of thumb, right? So as you can see, those Namcans are technically out of range of our archers. But are they? Dum dum dum! Amazing! We can target them beyond the maximum range by using their ability to shoot around the circle of the arrow rain. Namcans are all dead. Let's keep pushing forwards. Pushing with archers is a very strange thing to do. This was a very odd video to make. But it actually worked out kind of nice. So we're checking the map, find out where our team are pushing and where the, the enemy may be drawn to and we're going to keep on going. We'll tell the unit to hurry up and get to us because they're going to run through that supply circle. They don't have to stop in it to, uh, to resupply it, they just have to walk through it, right? We better finish capturing this uh, C point as well. Now we can see there's one enemy ranged bow, uh, ranged hero in front of us, a short bow, and he will make absolute mincemeat of prefecture archers if we allow him to. So will that musket. That musket will blow up half the unit in one go, and the, the prefecture archers have got such low health that they will immediately die if, um, if they're hit by the short bow. As you can see, arrow rain, when the enemy are nice and close and in a big bundle, is an absolutely devastating skill. And we don't need to replace the circle at this point because they will continue to target things around the area that we've told them to attack with arrow rain. Right now we don't want to get too much closer because I don't want to get bombs chucked at us by that musket. So what do we do? Allow them to shoot by themselves? Or we could put an arrow rain right there. And again, they will target things around that circle. As you can see, they're targeting things beyond our line of sight by using that ability. So very, very useful. Looks like they run out of things to shoot, or whether the arrow rain skill has run out of time. And they will immediately stop when that happens. Because there's nothing in their direct line of sight that they can shoot at, they'll simply stop and wait for another command. Now, if you don't know this already, if you get a unit of archers and you put just one archer, as you can see demonstrated there, onto the supply point, the whole unit will be continually supplied with arrows and will never run out. So we're going to use that to our devilish advantage. We can see some enemy ranged units here, some gunners. And so we open up on the gunners with the arrow rain. Unfortunately for us, these particular gunners are very slow to move around. So we're going to get to kill a whole bunch of them before they can even react. We're even going to be hitting some things beyond our gunners, happily. Some uh, Landshark Halberdiers. And look at this, look at the range that we've got around available to us. 
Don't be under any illusions. When you do this and you, you're using Archer's Ballistic Curve like this to shoot in, uh, into areas like this with impunity, eventually one of the enemy is going to get sick of that and go hunting your archers and take a dive on them. Even if it kills them, they'll, they'll try and hunt them down. And as you can see, we're using that nice high ballistic arc again to take out another unit of ranged, which in this case is another unit of muskets. You can see what are these four brachios? No, those are land sharks. So we'll try and target them with our area attack while we wait for the arrow rain to cool down. And as you can see, the, the cooldown on the attack area is very, very low, like pretty much non-existent, right? So you can continue moving that around and predict where the enemy are going to be. And as soon as you've got your uh, arrow rain up again, be sure to use it immediately. And just look at that kill count stack up. Absolutely carnage. Now, if you haven't spotted those crossbows over there, you might have missed out on some kills because those are very, very easy to kill. Here we go, the first volley will kill half a dozen. Unfortunately, they moved away because they saw our, our friendly infantry moving up. But right now, we can just do an arrow rain in the middle of nowhere and hopefully anyone who walks close to that will be targeted. As you can see, we're picking off some Nam cans in the back. We're trying to target the heroes. And overall, this is going really, really well. But suddenly, have you been paying attention to what's going on on the map? Have you been paying attention to what's going on with the archers? Exactly what I mentioned before has is, is happened. And well, that's because I've watched this video before, of course. But also, that's a very obvious thing for the enemy to do. When they're when all of their range units are getting sniped and picked off like that and you've got these massive vo volleys of arrows coming in somebody has to go and do something about it so you've got to be very aware of that and that is the end of our prefecture archers we just got one more left I'll quickly show you the, uh, the end screen for that particular game and then we'll go on to the outro Break them next. And there we have it boys and girls, uh, all the information that you need to know about the Prefecture Archers and whether or not you'd like to take them into battle, whether you'd like to research them and put a lot of effort into their tech tree or whether you're going to skip this unit altogether. Um, I do recommend it, it is a good unit and it will do you well if played correctly. Uh, hope you learned something new or you just enjoyed the guide. Thanks for coming to my channel.